Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming to the Inkjet Summit, by the way. I hope you enjoy this event as much as we do. We've, this is our third, and uh, we find it really a good way to touch the market. So, um, <clears throat> Today I'm going to give you uh, an insider's uh, view of what we did with uh, uh, a company called Trend Offset. In, uh, they have three divisions. They're in California headquarters. I'll give you a little idea uh, of how we got to the point that we, we got to. Uh, pardon my English. Um, uh, it, was, it was an interesting study, and it used almost all of our resources, so I thought it was a, it was a good high-level result. I'll also try to give you just a little example that we didn't have to go there so that everybody can feel maybe a little more comfortable with, uh, with other solutions that we have also. Um, <clears throat> so last year, we, well, I'll, I'll give you first of all just a little bit of background on MBO. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with us from a... Oh, wow, great, okay. So most people know us for folders, right? You say MBO, you say folder. That's just kind of the way it is, right? We've been in the sheet fed business and such all our lives and since about 50 years, actually this is year 50. Um, we've been in America since 1984 as a, as a, as a staple. We built a, a plant in Portugal, a couple hundred thousand square feet manufacturing facility actually to support America. It's original, original build. And <clears throat> the middle yellow bubble was our was really our first, that's, that's our core business. And the core business mostly is folding. It picks up direct mail, uh, books, you know, all the, the classic things. I'll just describe the balloons. Basically, the balloons had very different segments of the market in them. Um, we've, we've made now very firm for you into the digital business. We, we build auxiliaries like we build unwinders, rewinders, web turning stations, plow folders, uh, split and merge units. Uh, tension controls, web guides, and all that for the web business. And then we also made sure on the back end that everything we made can plug and play into the core business, which are the sheeting lines. So we really made a big, big move into this part, big, this segment of the market because we know where this is going, right? This is, this is serious here. This is not just a trend, uh, as no pun intended. <clears throat> packaging. Uh, we have made a, a lot of moves into the the packaging and the die cutting business. Our product line now also includes uh, sheet fed die cutting, uh, rotary sheet fed die cutting, and we build our own folder gluers and, and folders for, for specialty products and pocket folders and gift cards and the tag business and uh, greeting cards and those sorts of things. And of course, we're always known here, a lot of people don't know, but the Herzog and Hyman product line is MBO. We own it, it's our brand. Uh, we decided not to change it. it in America, that's a little difficult. In Europe, that's not so difficult. America has a little tougher time associating that, uh, but the Herzog and Hyman product is known in the insert and the, the lousy paper business. That's, that's its job. They really do a nice job with that. They build the miniature folders, and they're known for doing the 24 and 27 pound pharma stocks. So just a little about MBO for those of you where we are going. Uh, I'll jump right into trend, because I know this is short. Um, Trend uh, is headquarters office out in California, and they're, they're basically a, a, a monster jack-of-all-trades type of printer. They did a lot of things quite well. Uh, they're in the direct mail and retail, catalogs, books, uh, uh, pharmaceutical, little insurance, all types of different mailings. And they, they started in 55. They were looking at putting in an inkjet press last year. Uh, as it says, they, they chose the Canon 2400. Uh, I'll let Canon describe why and when on the press side. I'm going to focus in on the finishing piece of that. Uh, they are in three locations around the country, California, Texas, and here in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, large variety, very 24-7 very, uh, uh, and customer focused. So their goal, uh, their goal is to move more towards uh, growing their customer base uh, gathering in more customers, being more value to their customer, and using the data more, as people have been saying in the in the keynote speaks speak uh, in the keynote speeches, that the data is where the money is. Right, that's where people are using it. Using the data more for marketing, being closer, having variable print, and so on. They're up to this point very static oriented. <clears throat> Personalization. They also, when we started the finishing part of this process. Uh, they realize something that we have been talking, and, and actually Dave has been something we talked, he was our case study last year, which was a very common 
Uh, we, we don't really want to have cookie cutter products coming out all the time, this one company doing the same thing over again. So if you buy a finishing line, you don't want to always be set up just to do postcards or just to do f single folded products and that sort of thing. You have to be able to have the finishing line put together products that the, that the customer is going to want rather than trying to jam the customer into a mold. That doesn't work real well in our day and age. And it's kind of a key, uh, a key thought in there is successful printers don't make their customers fit their finishing, they gear their finishing to fit their customers. <clears throat> Any questions up to this point? I forgot to stall at the, at the, <laughs> at the, uh, at the bubbles. No? Okay. Little idea of some of the things. Uh, we had a very interesting first meeting with them. Uh, it was a big room. We had, uh, I don't know, six, seven guys and a couple of ours. And they walked in with the products. This is just a couple of them. And they threw them on a table. And I said, that's what we do. We need to finish that and we're buying a press. That was the meeting. So the challenge was uh, right away, we, we, have the, we have the ability to do a very targeted solution. We could put a line together that's very specific, or we had to figure out a way to do this, uh, which is, and, and this is just a piece of it. There were a couple of dozen products there that had many, many different ideas. And as the project went for months, it got bigger. It got more and more involved. So one of the key was they wanted to finish the piece in one step. Uh, they were a very traditional, uh, offset shop. They had a lot of folders and different pieces around the company. They would do sheet fed work then they'd take it to a station and do it, take it to a station and do it. They ended up with a long lead time because they had multiple processes. They're processing the same 25,000 sheets always the same way so the time just kept rolling and rolling. So one of the goals is to remove that time and that, that eliminating that was, was very positive. Uh, again back to that no cookie cutter production. We had to have something that would that would give the customer that one-to-one -one relationship with their customer. And it had to be versatile. I think I want to bring back up what Hart Hanks said today up on the, on the, on the stage. I, I really like that. Is you are not running today what you designed the systems to run when you bought them. And that's really key to us. We, we, we also believe that you don't know. We're, we're really geared to the commercial environment we have been all our life. And we know that, you know, you buy a folder today to do a some product that you bought the folder for and it did 60% of the work and next year you have no idea what's going to be on that thing. So it has to be very versatile. And they, all the things that they threw out on the table were in those, were in those categories. So what did we have to do for a solution? So right away we knew it was an inkjet, it was going to be a roll machine and it was decided to be a 20 inch. And they did bounce back and forth between the 20 and 30. Uh, 30 did not turn out to be a great uh, format fit for them. The 20 inch seemed to be the better uh, run length and, and, and count. Um, so we centered in on that rather early in the project actually. Uh, we, had to, we had to realize this, the specially versus flexible analysis and we went through that of course with all the products on the table and obviously flexibility was the, over, was the, over, uh, the overlord of that, of that match. Um, we needed to create some sort of a mix and match finishing environment for them. Uh, and our solution is more what we kind of call our parking lot modular advantage is things can be easily rolled in and out. So you basically have a core line which involves the sheet, uh, unwinder and sheeter. What you do with the sheet uh, before or after the sheeter is completely up to you. And also down the road you had to be able to scale it. It had to be either moved up or moved down or maybe you, you duplicate it and you take parts of it and make it a permanent fixture after you find out you can load the thing up with 80 percent of this type of work we can scale it to more more production on that particular environment. So a little idea of what the configurations were. Uh, this, is, this is kind of our parking lot idea <clears throat> and the idea, uh, I'll, I'll do it with the diagrams, we basically start out with an unwinder and a sheeter. Uh, we also, in, in here, we make plows and split and merge units and we can even do a hybrid inkjet solution if you're doing shells off of here. We can put inkjet heads like a domino and HP MCS heads can go in on prior to the sheet, keep track of it. At this point, it's kind of whatever you want. It's a plug and play environment. Uh, we, we make things that do 
cutting and perforating, stacking, banding, feeding, gluing, card affixing, whatever you want can go after here. And it's a matter of making sure you have enough room in the, in the area and just stringing the things together. So a little idea of what they, they gave us their four major items. And this would be one line that was very common in the direct mail. And it's basically a plow fold set up for card affixing and doing other affixing type uh, products onto a folded product. So unwind sheet, once I have it into a sheet, and the sheet can do chip out. It can have a variable chip out also. We can be a quarter inch today and an inch tomorrow, whatever it happens to be. Uh, the cutting unit uh, is actually a, it's, it's a timed unit. The, perf, the perfs and cut wheels can go on and off and timed uh, based on the job setup. Uh, it registers, it can apply glue on it. Um, uh, various, various operations here. More key is it's, it's scoring and perforating for the plow table downstream and we can start plowing products. We can plow things over and we can put the glue in the feeder before the plow or you can put it after the plow. You can put the cart on the outside, you can put the cart on the inside. Uh, the glue system is integrated back into the line and the feeder is too. Deliveries, we have a couple of different deliveries. This was a stream style delivery rather than a stacking delivery because it was such a versatile type of an operation. We wanted to have a shingled stream moving onto the table rather than a, rather than a band. Can you have um, cameras on it? Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yep, no problem. Uh, it's a rotary sheeter? Or a it's, a she uh, it's a rotary sheeter, right. yeah. It's a rotary sheeter, two anvils, so it can take the chip out on the one side and the other, right? Chip out's available from about uh, three millimeter, three millimeter to uh, three inches? Three sixteenths to three inches. Yeah. I knew I brought it for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another line that they keyed in on, um, they do books, they do some brochures, they do a lot of sixteens, eights, and things like that. The sheeter has the ability to sheet any length at once. It's not fixed. It can sheet into a four pager, an eight, a 16, a 20, and whatever you want, it's just a multiple of the page size back. And we can sheet up to an 80 inch piece. So you can imagine if you let your mind go a little bit, if you're running 11s, you can get a 66 inch product, fold it up, and you'd have six panels and such, for, and you can fold that down the middle, and then you have a, you have a, a much different you have a much different thing to live with. The whole book could actually be that one sig. So here we see a setup and was a, uh, we're folding in the parallel uh, on the sheet this direction. We have a little unit that, that forces it into this folder for registration good. Uh, and then it folds it again in the second unit and comes out as a banded product. So that might be something where you would do a, a 16 pager for your publication. And they had a lot of stitchers and binders so that fit pretty well. And you could also take, if you wanted to, you could put perfs and such on the back of the folders before it goes in here. You could actually take these cutting units and put them in here if you wanted to do some, some gadget work. You wanted to put a workbook perf down one side before it got folded, maybe and such. That would, that would be possible also. This one's very common for them. It's just the flat out letter fold. And it's a fast letter fold. And I, I do have a little video of the test we did for them in our shop. Uh, and it just basically goes right out, sheeter, folder, and abandoned delivery. And this is a one-person operation. I will give you just a quick couple of minute video so you can see this run. I'll let this play for a moment. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to speed by just a little quickly or we won't have anything left. So unwinder, web guide, sheeter. There's a cutting module and nip section in here to do perfs and edge trims before it gets to the sheeter. This is running 11-inch product into a folder. This happens to be a six plate folder. Long register table with cones to give you a nice registration on the edge. Um, web guide is a centering device watching the edge of the paper. And uh, this is a one person operation at this speed also as long as you have the automation on the back end during the, in the delivery. That's 824 feet a minute. Yeah. The top end speed of this machine is 250 meters and that I believe it's 824 if my numbers are right. We showed the extraction tube to show you it is taking a chip out. So we're cutting, the, this would be an end product where we're actually cutting the, uh, uh, maybe the uh, spit bar or, or whatever else you're using on the press to get out of there. It's actually doing it also.
camera is watching for products to be the wrong length. If they are, there's an ejection gate that can go out. Uh, products are being banded. They're dropping into a pile. Three, uh, two up, band comes around, seals, and it comes out. And this is actually, at that, even at that speed, it's manageable by one person. So in, in a normal environment, we actually do talk about uh, production like that being a one person, a one person operation. So here you'll see something that they did, which happens to be a remoist glue application. And this was done actually, which is very interesting. You'll notice there's no, a lot of people put dynamic perfs into this. And uh, we, we, we have an alternate solution for that, which absolutely was much more applicable to them. Um, has two cutting units, and those are tables that register the product and have perf timed perforation devices that can make the perfs and the score lines uh, based on, on a pattern. And uh, you can also glue on these tables. So we had remoist capability. You know some of the other things. There was remoist. There, we can make the... Time cut, time slip, you know, the tables are pretty flexible. This can make the, the sealed pack, the zip strip type self-mailer. Um, and we, on this one, we could fold at the end, goes back into the stream delivery. So this gives you the idea of what we have. And I don't want to say this is the only way we can build a line. I, I do want to make one step that if you are, if you're doing just books, right, we can set the line up to do that fold and make it, you know, fully automated if you wish to do <coughs> that particular 16-page job if you're a book printer. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing all letter <coughs> folds, you can just start out there and then move your way into it. So that's our, that's our modular approach to finishing in the inkjet world. So I'm running out of time, so I guess I'll have to ask for questions if there are any. What's the width on that? What's we make it both in 20 and 30. 20 and 30. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the other, are these all of the components that you could use, or are there other No, this components? just happens. There are others. Like, what are some of the other finishing capabilities that you could build a line <coughs> that a module? Uh, stitchers, mm -hmm. uh, multiple plows, uh, insert feeders, uh, gluers, die more cutting. die cutting. Um, so it's pretty extensive. Yeah, it, any. You put an in, did you say inserters? Mm hmm. It can go right into a stitching line. Uh, we build the finishing lines that actually can go on the front end of Mueller and Ibis and Col Colbus lines. What's the max OD on that unwinder? I think that's interesting. It's 60. Um, when you get up into the heavier boards, this is capable of up to 250 and 300 GSM, and we've got a bigger one yet. Uh, when you get into that big point board stuff, having a bigger roll keeps it running a lot. There's about, in paper, if you can get the mills to do it for you, you eliminate some of your splicing problems. Um, the 60-inch roll has about 40, I think the, I ran it, it's 46% more paper than a 50-inch roll. And that, that's a big deal if you could put in that unwindering. And if you, you could also rewind to a bigger core from a finishing stand. You start out at three, run into a six, you get the bigger diameter, we don't care. That helps you out with decurl and keeping the line run better. We had, those are standard things for us, decurls. Uh, some of the standard things that you might be, web guides and such, are all pretty much standard. And this can go in line too. I don't want to give you the impression it can't. This trend happened to be in offline. You can imagine you don't want a lot of this in line with a press where you want the uptime on your press to be in the upper 90s, you know, this thing's going to have a whole different uptime associated with it. And it's much less scalable when it's inside of a press line. Anything else? Well, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everybody listening. I appreciate it.